So I've been carrying and using the Fire Maple 1.2 liter bush pot for some time now. I thought you may be interested in hearing my thoughts on it. If you are, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending the Billy Pot to me for, so that I could share it with you. And uh, another thing before we begin is you may want to stay around to the end of this video because there's a bit of a pleasant surprise for at least one person, if you gather my meaning. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll give you the physical specifications and all the key features for this pot, but I brought along two other pots at viewer request that I could compare it with. All right, as we take a closer look at the Fire Maple 1.2 liter bush pot, first thing I'll just show you and then put it out of the way, and they does come with a nice little mesh nylon stuff sack. And the reason I point that out is because the other two pots I'm showing you don't. You have to make something or find something to use. So it's nice to have something like this included. Okay, so let's go over the specifications for this pot. So to start with, it is made from 4 gauge 18.8 stainless steel. So high quality stainless steel, ideally suited for being put in the fire and for cooking in. And you can see I've done both of those. All right, and weight comes in at one pound, one ounces, which is 478 ounces, but that's with the included steamer that I'll show you in a minute. The diameter, and this is the inside diameter at the top, is 4.72 inches or 12 centimeters. Keep that 12 centimeters in mind because I will be showing you the 12 centimeter zebra in comparison. The height from bottom to top is 5.62 inches or 14.3 centimeters. And the listed capacity for this pot by Fire Maple is 40.5 ounces or 1.2 liters. But I filled it up the other day because I was sure that it was more than that, and it is considerably more than that. And I'll show you exactly where I measured it at. Actually, why don't we do that right now? Uh, well, let's go over the key features. Then I'll show you how, how high you can actually fill this pot. So some of the things about it is a nice stand-up bale. You can see it has no problem standing up whatsoever. There are welded on attachment points that have detents in it that allow you to stand it up and not have to worry about it falling down then have to dig it up out of the fire. It does have butterfly handles on the side that fold out of the way quite nicely. One of the most unique features about this pot is the lid and I'll give you a couple close-ups of it and then I'll show it in operation. So the lid has a raised lift area right here. Easy to get a stick under or something under to lift it off of the pot in contrast to the Zebra, which can be a little bit more of a challenge. And here's what's really unique about this lid. It has these two fold over locking clasps and they work extremely well. They're very easy to use once you understand how to use them and they prevent you from losing your top into uh, the fire or, or at least uh, falling off while you're trying to pour your water but they also should be allow me to bake with this pot. Now, I'll show you what I mean. I haven't done that yet. That will happen in a future video, but I'll show you how I think this might be of some benefit. Let me put that down for a moment. So just inside of the pot, or well, actually around the outside of the pot, you can see that there is this uh, ring that's pressed inwards, and that is there to catch this little steamer tray. So, I know the zebra comes with a tray as well, or a little pan, or whatever you want uh, to call it. And most people assume it's for eating with, or maybe you can do some double boiling cooking inside of it, and you can. But a lot of people prefer to drill holes in that pan so that they can steam with it. And I think that's a really good use of the pan. Uh, this one comes with it. You don't have to worry about doing that. This one has the holes already drilled, and a good number of holes at that. In fact, somebody pointed out to me. Look at the pattern. I think I'm catching it just right. A maple leaf, right? So a fire maple pan with a maple leaf on it, also significant to Canada as our national symbol as well. So let's put that aside for a second. Another key feature on this pot, which believe it or not, does make a difference, is the pressed pour spout. Not very big, but big enough to help direct the water so you don't have a wide expanse of water rolling out over the edge. You can actually concentrate it into a fine stream as you pour from it, so it does actually make a difference. Now, here's the thing I wanted to say. Even though this is listed as 1.2 liters, I filled the water up to just at that line or just below that line, the line being where it's pressed inwards, the ridge on the inside of the pot. 
and then measured the contents and it came out at 1.4 liters. So uh, yeah, that's and that's still a functional capacity. I don't think that's too full if you want to fill it that high, that high. I don't often fill my pots all the way to the top. But uh, if you wanted to, you, I think you could functionally put 1.4 liters in this pot, certainly 1.2 liters, very easily, very safely. I don't know if I mentioned this about the bale, but the bale is removable. I'm going to get really dirty because I just had this on the fire. But if you pull outwards on the bale right here, I think that's showing up on the camera, you can take the bale off. Uh, I don't know any reason why you might want to. So if it did get loose for whatever reason, you could certainly take it off and bend it inwards and then put it back on just to get some more tension on it or maybe you just don't like pots with bales but either way you can do it quite easily on this pot okay so those are the key features for this pot now what I'm going to do is bring in two other pots one at a time so you can get a comparison of them all right what I thought I'd do just before you give the comparison with the first pot is to show you how these clips work so you can see how the clips just fold over and right on the clip itself it says press lock and that's exactly what you do just press down and it locks both sides and it's locked on and now the lid's not coming off. I mean it's not so tight that it won't come off if you, if you undo the locks. It's just locked on, or on enough that it won't fall off. To unlock it you literally go to the very outside and flip it up. And that's all there is to it to get it off. So it works very well. If you don't want to use them, they just fold out of the way. You can still reach under it there and use that. But if you like the idea of the security that those locks offer, that's all there is to it. Just reaching over and pressing on the spots that says press, just like that. All right, the first pot that I want to compare the Fire Maple Pot to is the one that was most requested by viewers. In fact, I kind of made a comparison to it in that introductory video some time ago, and that, of course, is the 12-centimeter Zebra Billy Pot, the quintessential bushcraft billy and for good reason it is super tough bomb proof is the way i've described in the past not without some of its own faults though many of which are corrected by the fire maple pot but just a quick overview of this pot let me put the fire maple down uh, this pot is available in a number of sizes you can get it in a small 10 centimeter size this is the 12 there is a 14 and a 16 centimeter size it's the 14 and 16 centimeter size that you see Steve Despain of Firebox Stove using to bake in. And having done that, they're great for doing exactly that, for baking in. Uh, they're just a little bit too big in my mind for carrying on a regular basis when I go out by myself. Now, if I'm with somebody else, the 14 centimeter is a good size pot. In fact, it's probably the near perfect all round pot. If you said, Mark, what is the one size zebra to get? I'd say the 14 because it uh, can do everything the smaller one can and most of what the big bigger one can. It's just a tiny bit bigger, of course. I have all the sizes with the exception of the 10 centimeter size, but uh, yeah, so we're focusing in on this one, the 12 centimeter, and I've had this a very long time. This I've had for, I'm thinking 10, maybe 12 years. I use it a lot, as you can see. I have a lot of experience with it. But there are some minor things about this can, that can be a bit frustrating. All right, so right off of the top, Anyone who's purchased one of these knows that they come with plastic clips designed to hold the lid on and to hold the handle upright. But we know <laughs> if anybody's done this, if you put them in a fire, the clips are just going to melt right off and make a mess. So take them off as soon as you get them home. Now, you can purchase pots new now from a couple of different places, including the Firebox stove site, as well as the Canadian Outdoor Equipment, that have metal clips already on them. And you can also make your own metal clips. In fact, that's what I did. Quite a while ago, I made just a single clip. I didn't bother with the second one, but I made a single clip out of a piece of coat hanger, and it works just well enough for me. And that well enough means the handle stays upright when I have it in the fire, and it helps to lock the lid on. It doesn't do a perfect job of it, but it helps to lock the lid on. So those are the primary things about this. Now the other one is, as you'll see in a minute, gotta undo that little lock, there we go, the lid. So the lid is a dome-shaped lid, which is nice in that it allows you to have a little bit more volume, especially if you're putting things inside of your pot as you pack them in your backpack. The one issue with the dome lid, again, not insurmountable, but it doesn't have to be like this, is that the little lift piece is flush. In fact, it's not only flush, it's recessed a little bit. So often you either use a fork 
or you take a stick that you shave down into kind of a flat kind of a piece on the front like a wedge so you can get underneath this to lift it off of your pot. It's one of those things you say, why didn't they just design it with a little bit of a raised area to make it easier to get a stick inside? Well, as you'll see, the fire maple people did exactly that. But the other one is, of course, is that it comes with this pan. I don't use this pan very often. I have. I've done eggs in it and a few other things. I've also used it as something to eat out of. It's heavy for taking along just for that purpose, but the pot does come included with it, and it fits in. Now, when you put the pan and the lid on, the lid doesn't rattle around very much because it's designed with the lip to fit inside of the pan. But if you take the pan out and then put the lid on, it's very loose on top. And some people find that extremely annoying. I do a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. I guess maybe I've gotten used to it. Okay, so now let's bring in the fire maple pot for the comparison. A couple of things that you're going to notice right away is the fire maple pot is taller by I don't know, three quarters of an inch, probably, yeah, half an inch to three quarters of an inch. What else does it have that the uh, zebra doesn't have? Well, it has that lifted area here, so I can get a stick in under and lift that off, which is nice. It has a bale that stands up without any required, uh, modifications required, and it's removable if you want to do that. It has the fold-out handles, which allows you to pick it up and pour it like a kettle, and it has that little form spout none of which are on the zebra pot. So yeah, those are the uh, key features that the fire maple has over the zebra. There's one more thing, and let me give you a few specs by comparison. So I did the same thing with this. I filled it up with water to about three quarters of an inch below the top, and it came out as a 1.2 liter capacity. That's not bad, you know, and, and that's fine. It's just nice to know that you can get a little bit more in the fire maple if you want. The weight of this pot is one pound, three ounces, or 548 grams. So it's a two ounce heavier than it is for the fire maple. I don't know, maybe there's a little bit heavier metal in it. Maybe it's the handle itself that adds for that extra two ounces because it is a, well, you can see it's a formed handle. And it's a good handle. Don't get me wrong, and I've never come off. It's never burnt through. The welds have never broken. Um, yeah, it, that's probably where the extra weight is in this. Now, when I was playing around with this, I thought you might be interested in seeing this, just in case this is something that you like to do if you have both pots. The lids are, in fact, interchangeable, which is kind of cool. So if you, for whatever reason, just want that little bit extra height on your fire maple, you can by using your 12 centimeter zebra pot, or if you like the idea of having that lower lockable lid on the Zebra, you can do that. I'm just trying to see if it will lock on with the little clips. Yeah, actually it does. There you go. So you can use the little clips to lock on top of your Zebra as well. Kind of uh, improved the Zebra by having a, not only a locking lid, but a lid that you can get in under the uh, uh, lifter on there. All right, so that's those two pots compared. Now, one more weight. By the way, the weight I gave you for the Zebra also includes this pan because I figured it had to be apples to apples for weights. So here's the other pot I had not even considered comparing it with until some of my viewers asked for it, and that is the Camel Well pot. Now, this pot is listed as 1.2 liters on a lot of websites. I'll tell you now, it's not. It's not even close to that. But uh, I have two videos, maybe three videos, using this pot and giving it a review, giving it a good review, and it is a good little pot. And what made it good were a couple of the key features of it, but one thing especially, which was the price. Used to be you could get these very inexpensively, and as one of my viewers pointed out, not so much anymore. They've gone up dramatically in price. However, the other day I was cr uh, cruising through either AliExpress or Amazon, I'm not sure which one it was, and I spotted one of these by a company other than uh, camel will. So if you watch for these, you will find them still at better prices than the camel will brand is. And it's identical pots. It's probably made in the same factory and rebranded, right? So, okay, what are some of the key features in this? Well, stand up bail. It is a bar type bale. It has actually limiters to keep it from going forward, but not backwards, so you can tuck it out of the way. It does have butterfly handles on the outside. Another comment on those in a minute. 
And it has a huge stand-up D-ring here so that you can lift it off of the pot without any issues with the stick. Uh, yeah, that's a nice feature. And it has a formed, or actually it's not a formed, it's a welded on spout. So those are some of the features of this. Let me just give you the weight of this. So this pot, and it doesn't come with a little pan inside like the other two do. This comes in at 12.3 ounces. So considerably lighter, 12.3 ounces, 349 grams max capacity and there are some measurements up the side which stop at 700 milliliters but you can see easily that you can go to 900 milliliters for another it's about an inch separation between each of the segments but i was able to get what i think is a safe usable functional volume of one full liter in this and that's just below there are two rivets i think they show up here two rivets right there holding on the bale attachment so just below that this will come in at one one full liter. I don't think I'd put any more than that in here because uh, you're going to have water pouring out of the spout as it boils. Now let's speak about the spout. If you go back and watch that other video, you'll notice that I complained about the spout until I modified it. And the reason being is there were only a couple of small holes uh, in the spout or in the inside of the pot that to allow the water to come through and they're intended for straining so you could put tea, loose tea in there all kinds of things maybe even cowboy coffee and it would strain most of it out problem is it took forever for the water to pour out of the spout and quite often it wanted just to run over the top so the modification was is to drill it out so hopefully let's see should be able to see the holes right here where I drilled them all out, uh, you know, much better now than it was then. But you know, it's if you have to do modifications to your pot when you get it, you have to wonder was it a good investment to start with, especially when you can get something like fire maple with the form spout already on the pot, no modifications needed. The other thing I found and not a big deal, um, was the butterfly handles. You can see I've got them fairly stiff now, but they were so loose and rattly that I had to take a hammer and tap on all these four points to get it to pinch onto the handle so that they would stay upright. It made a huge improvement. Maybe you don't mind that, but I just found it a little annoying the way it was. All right, so did I give you the weight of this? Yes, I did 12.3 ounces, 349 gram. All right, when I opened the video up, I mentioned you may want to stay to the end because I would have a surprise that to make one of my viewers especially happy, and that is I'm doing a giveaway for one of these pots. And the giveaway is being sponsored by Fire Maple, and they said they would give away one of these pots to one person. However, there are some limitations, and that is it can only be in Canada or the United States. I apologize to any of my other viewers, but those are what the rules from Fire Maple were for me, is that they would ship one of these to one person in Canada or the United States. So without making a big deal out of this, what I would ask you to do is just put your name in the video comments to say you're interested in the giveaway. And then one week from the posting of this video, I will make another video where I draw that name. And then of course, I'm going to be looking for that person to contact me so I can get their inf shipping information so I can get one of these pots out for you. So some final thoughts on these pots. Are there any downsides? Not that I can think of, honestly. This is likely to become the replacement for my uh, zebra pot. I, I don't see any reason why I'd want to go back to the zebra. Maybe sentimentally I would, but for every other reason, this pot has succeeded it in, in all its features. There's really nothing about this pot that I can say negative uh, at all. Oh, I wanted to show you how you might use this pot for baking. I'm just going to snap those two lids down. So we'll assume that I uh, was going to bake a little something in a little pan. And uh, what I would do, like you'd see a lot of times, is put the thing in on, on edge like this, suspend, you know, right in the bottom of the pot. And then you can lock the lid on. And what's so great about that is the lid's not falling off. Then you can do one of two things. This could be placed right on top of a wood stove on charcoal or gas or alcohol or whatever it is you want to use. Or as one of my viewers suggested, could I do a three-point attachment and put this directly uh, hanging by a, uh, a tripod directly into the coals of the fire? And well, you can see, yeah, I think I can as long as I can do this with it. There's no reason why I couldn't hook it up and do exactly that. So this is a little easier to bake with than maybe the zebra is, unless your zebra happens to have those locking clips on it. And, you know, even with those, 
uh, they're just a little bit more work to manage. Not so this. This is actually quite easy to manage. So that's one of the other benefits I like about this. And it came with them. No modification necessary. So what's to like about it? Everything. You know, this is just a near perfect Billy Potter bush pot in my mind. Downsides, I can't think of any at all. But what I'll do now is open it up to you. And maybe you have some comments. Do you own one of these? Uh, are you thinking about buying one of these? What are your thoughts on it? If you have experience with it, put all of that in the comments section below. Any questions you might have about it? I will be putting the uh, information for Fire Maple, where you can purchase these, and the links, I believe, to both the U.S. Amazon as well as Canadian Amazon if you want to purchase one of these as well. But uh, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.